Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're going to be doing a brief overview of a lot of different models that attempt to explain the price path for Bitcoin. But I need your help. What I would like to do over the next several weeks and months is bring on experts that, that follow various models. And I wanna interview them on, on the different models, have them present these models to you guys so that you, you can see other ways that you can look at the valuation of Bitcoin. So that it doesn't become an echo chamber, so that we can, we can actually understand other models and do so by interviewing someone and do it in a completely respectable way. And to always challenge our assumptions and, and not ultimately become an echo chamber. Okay, you know, as an academic myself, I, I feel like this is paramount. This is absolutely paramount. You don't want to become an echo chamber. You always want to challenge assumptions and, and present different views to the same data set. Okay, so as we, as we show these different models, what I want you to do is name someone in the comments, in the comments, put someone's name that is a big proponent of that model and then put the model next to their name. And that way I can try to reach out to them and, and ask if they wanna come on the show. You know, I don't have as big of a channel as, as some of the other major crypto channels, but hopefully we can bring some people on to discuss where Bitcoin is with its price and ultimately where do they see the price of Bitcoin going. And the models that I wanna talk about, I'm gonna go through several of them, okay? Now, I will say this now, before we get into these different models, I think all the models that I'm about to tell you about, there's some merit to all of them, okay? Now, you might say, well, what does that mean? Because all these models are, are saying slightly different things. Well, that's not the point, right? My view on models is that all of them are wrong, some of them are useful, okay? All of them are wrong, some of them are useful. There's not going to be a single model that's gonna tell you exactly what will happen, but a lot of models can give you a, a great idea of what will happen, even if they can't tell you exactly what will happen, okay? And because of that, if it gives you a different view on Bitcoin for you to consider, and if it helps you understand your own investment strategy with Bitcoin, then to me, that model is useful, okay? So what are the different models? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna list a lot of the different models. We're gonna more or less go from, say, the most bullish case to the most bearish case. And then we're gonna try to bring on people to, to argue about uh, why a certain model is, is, is um, more representative. And, and maybe argue is not the right word, but just discuss, right? Discuss why is this model uh, the way that you see Bitcoin playing out? Okay, we're gonna, we'll ask open-ended questions, get them to describe the model, and, and we'll just, we'll take it from there. So the first model that is the most bullish model that I, that I have seen is the super cycle model, okay? And the super cycle model is, is essentially saying that the price of Bitcoin is in a completely different state than it ever has been in the past. That we cannot use prior moves of, of, of Bitcoin to understand the current phase that we're in. And the idea is, well, why should we? It's never been, Bitcoin's never been to this scale before. Institutions are, are, are starting to gobble Bitcoin up like they've never done before. And more and more people are getting involved in crypto and with, with pretty well-known leaders talking about crypto, um, it, it, you know, you could make the argument that you cannot compare an ICO boom of 2017 or an extremely speculative market of 2013 and 2011 and, and to still today. You cannot compare those to what's going on today as, as institutions continue to, to buy Bitcoin and, and we completely do away with the idea of, of cycles in the sense that they have to repeat every, every few years, okay? So this is a super cycle model. And I think a lot of the people that uh, believe in the super cycle model don't really see necessarily a, a cap for the price of Bitcoin. They just likely see it trending up and up and up and not having any significant bear markets or reaccumulation phases. It's just the earlier you buy Bitcoin, the better, right? This is the accumulation. 44K is the accumulation. 64K a few months ago was the accumulation because it's all accumulation if it's below a million dollars or something because that's where it's headed anyways. And if Bitcoin's headed to a million dollars anyways in the next couple of years, why should you care about it being at 44K or 64K? Okay, so I think a lot of these people believe that Bitcoin is gonna be headed to 500K plus 
and even up to millions of dollars over the next several years, and then we're not gonna have any consequential bear markets, okay? This is a super cycle model. And this is probably the most bullish one. After that, you have some other models, and I think the stock to flow cross asset model comes next, okay? So I had plan B on the show yesterday, and we discussed the stock to flow cross, cross asset model. And you know, it looks something like this, okay? And the general idea is that the price of Bitcoin, the market capitalization of Bitcoin, should trend towards the market capitalization of gold this cycle, okay? And if it's gonna do that, then we still have a potential 10x from here in the price of Bitcoin. And if we have a 10x, then we could go to $500,000, right? There's nothing keeping Bitcoin from going to $500,000. And if you look at this model on this scale, remember, a lot of people assume that this line here predicts the peak of Bitcoin, but it doesn't. 288K is not the peak prediction of the stock to flow cross asset model. The reason why I know that is because we had plan B come on the show yesterday and clarify it, and because the model does not predict peaks. It does not predict peaks at all. It does not predict bottoms at all. All it does is predict the average price of Bitcoin over a certain time period. And so this model predicts that starting from say like the end of 2020 or so, the average price of Bitcoin over the next four years should be approximately $288,000. And if the average price of Bitcoin is 288K, then that means it could be where we are today at 45K or so, 44K. It could also go as high as 500K. As long as the average price is around 288K, that's, that's what the model is trying to show, okay? So I would say that that model is probably, probably the next bullish one in the sense that it's going to say that we could overtake gold this market cycle, which would represent Bitcoin going up potentially another 10X from the current prices. But then he, the stock to flow model, um, or I should say plan B, the, the author behind the stock to flow cross asset model says that, you know, we're, we're still gonna have bear markets, right? We're, we're still gonna have phases where, where the market's gonna just drop pretty significantly and it's not gonna be a super cycle, okay? So I would say that's probably the next bullish model and that predicts an average price, right? An average price of approximately 288K over, over the next four years. And I should say maybe starting um, about, about 10 months ago or so, as you guys saw the chart. Starting the end of 2020, the average price should be about 288K. And the reason why this could still be completely valid is because you might say, well, it's 44K today. How is that close to 288K? Remember, it's just an average price. If Bitcoin goes to 400K next year, then we're averaging the prices out and we're, we could be a lot closer to 288K. And if we're gonna look at the average price over four years, then certainly you cannot jump to any conclusions in the first year if it's not that average target, okay? Because if in three years the price of Bitcoin is trading for $400,000, then it's going to bring up the average from, what, from where we are today, okay? So this would say be another more bullish prediction. Okay, and then if you keep going down, there's other models as well. And at this point, I, I think it becomes a little bit harder to distinguish what's more bullish or not. One model, um, because again, the stock to flow model isn't predicting a peak, okay? Because there's also the stock to flow model, but the stock to flow model, again, it's just not the stock to flow cross asset, stock to flow is just saying it should be just over 100K for the next four years. Not 288K, but just over 100K for the next four years. And if it's just over 100K, then that's not, it's not quite as high. That means maybe you could have a, a peak closer to 300K. Um, and, and it's, it's completely, it's still completely on course, right? You could, you can see here, we went above it. Um, note that the model wasn't developed until over here. Remember a lot of models weren't developed until, until after the last cycle peak back in 2017. And if that's the case, then 100K could be the average price of Bitcoin over the next four years. Um, so that would be one model. I'm just not sure if that would come next because you also have uh, four year cycle models. So there's a four year cycle model and the four year cycle model can be interpreted a lot of different ways, a lot. And I've seen so many people interpret this in, in, in so many different ways that it's almost like saying you believe in the four year cycle doesn't mean anything. It just doesn't mean anything because there's so many people that interpret it differently, okay? Some people say that the four year cycle is not based on the peaks. It's not based on the peaks, it's based on the bottoms. Therefore, the idea that the price of Bitcoin has to peak in any specific month of the year is, is nonsense. 
and, and that really you should be looking at cycle bottoms, not cycle tops. That's often a misconstrued um, amongst the crypto community of the four-year cycle model, the idea that it has to peak in December, which it doesn't, right? I mean, we've had Bob Lucas on the show before, and we'll have him on again here not in, in the not so distant future. He's a, a big proponent of the four-year cycle model, but again, he bases it on the bottoms, not the peaks. Okay, there's a, there's a difference. So you have a lot of different trains of thought with the four-year cycle model. So you have one which is basing it off the bottoms, and then you have some that are basing it off the peaks and the idea that the price of Bitcoin has to go up and, and peak every December from, you know, that's just what it's going to do. In you know 2021, it's going to go up for the next four months and then have an 80% correction. It did it in 2017, it did it in 2013, and and so on and so forth. Now, the the reason why why the the super cycle model could be correct is, is what we said, right? Institutions coming on board. Maybe this is just when we really get worldwide adoption and things just go you know they just go crazy for several years. Okay, the stock to flow cross asset model, as Plan B said. Um, is you can think of it maybe as like an interpolation between where we are and where we're headed in terms of being constrained by the market cap of gold or the market cap of real estate of approximately 100 trillion. The four-year cycle model could be correct in the sense that what if it is just built around the halvings and, and that the cycle bottoms will occur you know, sometime right before the halving, maybe a year or two before the halving, and then the, the major phase, the major blow-off mania phase comes within a couple years after that. There's merits to all of them. Um, and, and so, because the, the 2013 peak, I believe, was like the very end of November was the peak price, but then there was, we still hung around that until early December um, of 2013. and 2017, we peaked in December. The 2011 peak was in June, but obviously the, um, or sorry, it was in, I believe, it was either in, it was in the summer. It was in the summer. Let's go, let's go take a look. Um, uh, let me go, let me go over here and uh, go, go really quick, Quickly, we'll go look to see the first uh, the first peak for Bitcoin. Um, so let's go all the way back to to 2011. Here it is, and it was in June, yeah, like June 10th or so. Okay, so that was the one that happened in the summer. So the you know there's certainly merits to all of them because the, the idea is that the first one in 2011 is just complete complete nonsense. You should not use it. Uh, because it happened before the, the halving that we had later on. So you have the four-year cycle model. Some of them base it on bottom, some of them base it on tops. Uh, some of them base it on diminishing returns. Others do not base it on diminishing returns. So there's also a question there. Is it going to peak this year? Now, if it peaks this year or, say, really early next year, then we're looking at, at something similar to the four-year cycle. And, and you know, I've seen a lot of predictions of a peak of around 300 k this would not be assuming diminishing returns. And the reason they say 300K is because Bitcoin did about 100X last market cycle. So the idea is that it could also do 100X this market cycle. Um, and so that is the four-year cycle model without diminishing returns. You also have the four-year cycle model with diminishing returns, which say, you know what? Maybe it's going to peak every four years, but we do accept the law of diminishing returns in the sense that we cannot go as high every cycle just because of how much exponentially more volume we need. So in this case, it might say the four-year cycle model, but maybe the peak is closer to 100K, right? 100K rather than, um, rather than 300K. You know, you also have models, uh, obviously there's ones I talk about, there's the lengthening cycle model, which I think is, is, is worth considering. Obviously, the, the cycle should should get longer, and I think there's there's some misconceptions between the lengthening cycle and the super cycle. I do not think we're in a super cycle. Like I don't think Bitcoin's just going to go up uh, nonchalantly for the next five years and not have any consequential corrections. But I also think that we could go above 100k. I think we could probably go somewhere, you know, maybe between 100k to 200k um, within the next one to two years. Okay, so that's sort of what I'm looking at. Um, so 100 to 200 k within the next two years. It doesn't it doesn't mean that the peak is this year. Okay. I should also say that Plan B clarified that the stock to flow model, okay, the stock to flow model does not have to peak this year. In fact, it's more likely, according to say the stock to flow cross asset model, that it continues moving on up in 2022. Otherwise, how is it going to catch gold? Because we need to go up another 10x, and it's, it's going to be very hard for Bitcoin to go up 10x in the next few months 
And so for it to go up 10x, we probably really need to go well into 2022. So super cycle, stock to flow cross asset, the four-year cycle model, um, the four-year the four year model without diminishing returns, the four-year model with diminishing returns. Uh, obviously, you know, you should, we could probably put the stock to flow model in here. It's just that it only predicts averages, right? So it's hard to say, well, what is the peak? What is not? Um, but maybe, maybe that's what we could do. Maybe we could put um, the stock to flow, let's say right here. Um, let's say, let's say actually four is a stock to flow. Um, and then we have uh, five is the four year mark, four year cycle with diminishing returns. And then six is the lengthening cycle with diminishing returns. But assuming that we have a lengthened cycle, then we should be able to go above 100K, right? Because we have plenty of more time to do it. We could easily go 150K, maybe even up to 200K by the end of the cycle. So you could argue that the lengthening cycle model is actually more bullish than the four year cycle model because it assumes we're going to keep going up for more than just the rest of the year, but that we're going to still trend up in 2022 as well, and maybe even 2023. So I would say that you could even argue that lengthening cycles should be should be five and that the four year cycle model with diminishing returns should be six. Um, from here, you would have number seven, which is um, the peaks already in, right? The peak is already in, my friends. This is the this is the last one, peak in, and the the the, the way that you, you know you could sort of justify these various models, right? We we talked about a lot of these up here. The four year model, the, the four year cycle without diminishing returns could just say, well, last one was a fluke. We should have gone up higher. Therefore, we should now go up to 100x because the last cycle should have gone to 150x if maybe futures weren't introduced or something. Uh, therefore, therefore, this one can go up 100x. Um, the the four year cycle with diminishing returns would be we accept that there's diminishing returns, but we still think it's a four year. The lengthening cycle being all the cycles have lengthened so far. The peak in. How is there any support for this one? This is obviously not a popular one. You have to consider it still, right? You have to consider it. That, that's another one. Number seven. The peak's already in. Why? Why is that a model that should be worth considering? Is it? Should we? Well, I mean, there's there's reasons, okay? What what are some reasons? Well, one, we went to our regression ban, right? I mean, maybe we didn't have any weekly closes in it. We still made it there, right? I mean, we still made it there. It's not like it's not like we didn't make it there. And and so you can see that we made it to the regression band. What else? We had we had a pie cycle top at the top. What else did we have, right? Well, we had we had the we had the the subsequent death cross, right? The subsequent death cross, which happens every single time. We, we, you know, maybe we're potentially in a dead cat bounce and we're gonna get rejected back down. We've seen this before. And if you go look at say like the weekly time frame, and you look at like the, the 50 week and the, and the bull market support band, which is what we like to look at, we've seen exactly this, right? A bounce off the 50 week, up to the 20 week, and then we get rejected. Right now we're slightly above it, which is giving us hope, right? We've seen this before. This is not new. This is not new. We've seen these bounces. This one was off the 50 week, it went above the 20 week, but it didn't change the fact that we were still heading down. So all sorts of models exist. All sorts of models exist. So we cannot look at any one of these models, in my opinion, and, and write them off without a second thought. We have to look at them and say, you know what? maybe they're right. If you, if you operate deterministically about anything, it's one way that you can, you can really struggle to navigate crypto. So what I would say is what you need to do is you need to, you need to look at all of these models, hear all the arguments for all of them, and then come to your own conclusions. And the best way we can do that is to invite people onto the show to discuss the various models, why they think what they do, and then you can decide. It's hard to decide it if you don't know what the model is, right? It's hard to decide it if someone isn't presenting the evidence in front of you, if someone isn't making a compelling case um, that has studied that model for years, it's hard to decide what you think about it. But if we bring people onto the show over the next several weeks and months to discuss all of the potential possibilities, then it could become more abundantly clear that some similarities pop out out of various models and they're maybe saying the same thing or Maybe it becomes a clear that, okay, well, there's some models that, that seem like they're accounting for other things and other models. And why are these other models not accounting for that? Like, what do they see that we don't? 
And we can use this thing, we can use this to, to, to develop new ideas in, in trying to better understand where Bitcoin is going over, over the next several years. So again, I need your help. I would like you, if you, if you see some of these models on here and, and you'd like to see us have someone that's on to talk about them and you think, hey, this is a good person to talk about this model, put their name in the comments and, and then you know, say what model you think they would, they would best represent that we could talk to, bring them on, ask them fairly open-ended questions on, on, on the model, have them describe it, what are the advantages of the model, what are the disadvantages, and, and then we can go from there. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Let's go for half a million subscribers. Give the video a thumbs up. Also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Thank you guys for tuning in. Definitely subscribe, click the bell icon to turn on notifications, and I will see you next time.